G'day, this is Matt Cornell from Cornell Engineers. Today I wanted to go into a little bit about screw piers, which are steel poles with a helix on the bottom that are screwed into the ground instead of board piers. They have a few uses in residential construction. Some of these aspects I like, some of them I don't like so much. So let's go ahead and we're going to have a look at this video that is being put up by Ideal Foundations, uh, how a screw pier is installed, just so you get a feel for what a screw pier actually is, and thank you to the guys from Ideal Foundations. So they start with a steel pole with a, a screw on the bottom, and an excavator pushes it into the ground, and the screw turns into the ground, and you can see it's displacing the ground a little bit, push a little bit of dirt out of the way. Not a lot of dirt, but still, as it drives into the ground or is driven into the ground it creates this layer of loose soil as it goes in um, so a little bit of that soil getting moved away by the worker on site and quite correctly they're going to say in a second here that there isn't that much soil comes out of the ground no spoil to remove from site so a little bit of dirt comes out of the ground the ground was firm and, and stiff in this location we'd assume and it's being driven as the screw goes in it it's going to create a layer of loose soil in around the steel the round steel shaft that you get see getting driven into the ground there in this case they've done a two meter they're about to put an extension on uh, they lift the auger out of the way the head drive head out of the way lower it back in again and drive it in for another two meter length and then in a second there, once they get this down, all the way down, another two metres. So that, that spiral, that auger right down the bottom, is being driven into the ground at the moment, say it's about three metres into the ground, creating this layer of loose soil in around the pier. Uh, they'll pull the head out of the way again. And install the last one meter section the design here apparently says a five meter screw here is required so the last meter gets driven into the ground so now we have a five meter long steel column that goes into the ground it at the bottom of it it has that that auger that a uh, bit of uh, steel plate that's at the bottom that's what's going to stop it pulling up up and that's what's going to resist any downwards loads that are on these piers so that's what a screw pier looks like and that's how it's installed um, thanks once again to the guys to from ideal foundations now I just want to go through what I like and what I don't like about this screw pier system some of the problems and how some of these things, how we're solving some of these issues. All right, so that's what a screw pier is and that's how it gets installed. So in our sketch, we're gonna show screw piers like this. They start off with a steel post and a helix, which in some cases actually two half helixes which are attached to the post. But while I'm doing this demonstrate for this for this sketch, for these sketches, I'm just going to show a screw pier like this. A little bit different to the one we just saw on the screen, but it'll get the picture. Um, so these get drilled into the ground. Yep. And the reason we're putting a screw pier into the ground is because the ground surface, the design of the engineer designing the building, whatever it is that is being supported by these screw piers, is concerned that this ground isn't strong enough at the surface level. Uh, we have to go down a certain amount of depth to achieve a good strong foundation. So an engineer is going to be the one specifying how much load is on these screw piers. And the screw pier manufacturer has a set of rules about how deep then the screw pier has to go. And often these are based on how much force or torque it takes to screw the screw pier down into the ground. So the, the stiffer the soil, the, the harder the soil, the harder it's going to be to screw the screw pier. And when they 
work out how hard it is to turn the screw peer and that is registered on the excavator on the machine on the digger that's when they stop all right so now we've got screw peer we've got soil we've got a depth that they need to go which is to achieve a certain torque um, so let's talk about what sort of forces are put into screw peers as engineers we design screw peers generally for a vertical load either for dead loads and live loads we have a down load and for wind loads so that's dead and live and for wind loads we might have uplift loads or uh, and we'll come into this later on we might have sideways bracing loads that need to be resisted by the screw piers uh, or a combination maybe the house is on stumps into the ground here's the house uh, the stumps the wind blows sideways on the house that load is being transferred down through the cross bracing into a screw pier that's being put in the ground by an installer but it's not pure vertical there's a vertical component but because of this sideways load there's also a resistance a sideways resistance that is being put into the screw piers and so I want to talk a little bit about how that is going to be resisted by screw piers so there are three types of loads we've got dead loads downwards loads wind loads upward loads generally um, and also wind loads sideways loads they go down into the ground into a screw pier which is really only designed for vertical loads how are we going to get around that so the way we prefer to get around it is to get the builder to start with a board pier in the ground so a round excavation whatever diameter to suit the size of the screw pier uh, they dig that into the ground first then they send the screw pier down and they screw pier into the bottom and then they go down to the required depth they need to get sufficient bearing and uplift because the soft soil at the surface is is not good enough for this screw pier to be founded in um, the board pier isn't strong enough by itself to take the loads from the design loads so we specify a load for the screw pier designer in tons in working load limit um, and then we've got this concrete footing or excavation that sorry we've got this excavation that once the screw pier has been installed we fill up with concrete and then the house footings can sit on or into this footing the problem though where we've got we just watched that video where the screw pier was sent straight into the ground down five meters and they've said that they've got sufficient bearing capacity but as you saw as the screw pier went into the ground it left a trail of loose soil as the screw pier was driven down that five meters it's left this trail of soft soil as well as our friend on TV on the screen might have tried to compress the dirt at the surface we know because we saw the soil coming out we know that there's this soft layer of soil all the way down following the screw pier and this is one of the problems that I have with screw pier designs being used in residential construction one we already know designers already know that screw pier poles need to be designed as if there's no support from this ground at five meters for that pile that was just put in by that we watched on YouTube uh, I'd have serious concerns whether or not a five meter long steel pole in the ground with minimal support coming up and finishing at ground level so five meters overall that's a big column with no sideways restraint a big enough load is going to buckle that post so that really needs to be taken into account by the designer of the screw pier that's the the manufacturer of the design team uh, their engineers so that's one of the problems the other one is so and I guess to help you picture it here's what 
a buckled sorry a, a buckled screw here might look like so once it buckles and pushes sideways it's not necessarily a defined point those connections are maybe fairly stiff but once it tilts sideways that load that was being placed on it at ground level is no longer being taken by the screw pile it might end up touching the sides and might eventually stop but we're going to experience vertical movement at the top of the screw pile the purpose of the screw pile is obviously to not move to support our foundation our building on something good and stiff but if it's moving if it flexes when it's placed under load then it's not doing its job so for me that's a fail the way we get around that is obviously or the way the manufacturer gets around that is obviously to use a large pipe so the longer they think they might be going into the ground and it requires good soil testing to work out how far this distance is the larger that pipe's going to need to be alternatively a diff additional rather additional screw piers can be screws can be installed into the foundation and then these are going to be able to transfer a little bit of sideways force into the ground restrain that middle pole at whatever centers so I'd expect on a really long pole going into a screw pier going into the ground that there's going to be a couple more flights a couple more auger screws that go down into the ground and they're going to help stabilize these poles in that trail of soft soil so don't forget this is our preferred option at ground level that gives us the chance to put a pot we call it a pile cap we drill that first then the screw pier goes in we fill that with concrete and either our house footings go down into that concrete or they sit on top on a base plate so we've taken care of the uploads because the screw pier manufacturer designs the piers for that we've taken care of the downloads because the screw pier manufacturer designs for that and we've taken care of those sideways forces because our board pier that gets dug in first before the screw pier goes in has got a little bit of sideways restraint and we also saw that sometimes we put crush bracing underneath the house and that force is coming down so there's a vertical component and a horizontal component so for po steel posts for house posts that come down onto a board pier or a screw pier foundation through a board pier we're using the board pier for that lateral support we need to justify and prove that there's enough bearing capacity there and there's other ways of doing this obviously the bigger that concrete hole is the more sideways support we're going to get and we're getting the vertical support from the screw pier whether it be vertical up or vertical down so let's talk about some of the problems that we have with screw piers and how we're going to overcome them so houses on reactive clay soils invariably the designer of perhaps a waffle slab because this is where I've seen it more often used put screw piers in around the outside and that's well and good we've got a foundation a fairly strong stiff matrix of waffle pad beams running across the building the slightly thicker one around the outside with supported the outside load where the load from the house main load of the house is supported which is the walls the roof and the load from the walls coming down on the perimeter footings so the screw piers are located appropriately for those vertical loads the the weight of the house let's talk about when this ground starts to move because the idea of of these screw piles is to support in and they're more often used than highly uh, h1 slash h2 so super highly reactive and e extremely reactive sites and class p sites so we're going to see likely to see screw piers in a waffle pod design on these h1 h2 class e class p sites and the designers using them to get the weight or the support of the building down into a soil that or in a layer of soil that is more stable and stronger than the surface supporting soil the first issue that causes is especially when it's class p soil and this is soft soil the soil eventually consolidates 
and it's not a major problem, but there'll be times when you see a house supported on a screw pile, but the ground has actually dropped away. Standing over here can be quite alarming for someone because they can see in underneath the house. They may not see that there's these steel posts in underneath the ground, but they can see in underneath the house. And that's why this is more of a problem on waffle slabs because they're built entirely on top of the ground. So someone's standing outside, looking down, can see underneath the house, not such a big problem if the house is supported on piles, whether they be screw piles or conventional board piers. That's fine, a little bit of digging down around the outside here, and we're gonna identify whether these piers are here. Um, and if the house is performing okay, not really a problem. I mean, this, this ground around the outside, out here, can be filled in. Probably don't recommend, depending on the soil class, filling in underneath the building, placing in extra fill underneath the building in case this ground movement reverses, in case this settling isn't consolidation, but is actually the soil drying out which is the opposite of slab heave, where the ground surface lifts up. So where there's ground dropping because really dry conditions, in case the ground one day gets wet again and starts to lift back up again, we don't recommend filling in this space between the underside of the waffle pod and the ground surface. We don't want it to lift back up and lift the house back up. What about if we have reactive ground movement? particularly if the house is supported only around on the perimeter. On screw piers, down at a firm layer, with pure vertical loads going into the screw piers as they're designed for, everything's going pretty well until the ground in the middle of the house either drops or lifts. These footing systems are designed for, depending on, are designed for a certain amount of lifting swelling. If the screw pier is around the outside and the house is well supported around the outside, we've got a portion of the house which is supported really, really well at a depth where it's, the ground isn't moving at all. We've got a portion of the house that's potentially fully uh, being affected by ground movement, ground heave, or subsidence. And invariably these footing systems aren't fully designed for that. So my recommendation would be, if you're going to, if it, your engineer is going to specify screw piers around the outside, we really would recommend putting screw piers in at the internal footings as well. And depending on the width of the house, that's really going to be up to your your engineer, it's a few more screw piers, but it means if that ground does drop, the house is all still fully supported at that firm layer down at depth. Unfortunately, it also means that because of this, that we don't have screw piers, which beg your pardon, we don't have pile caps, we don't have any lateral support because we've got a layer of soft soil surrounding the posts. We also end up with a house that doesn't really have a lot of lateral support. So, screw recommendation for especially waffle slabs is to have screw piers, if you're gonna have them around the outside, at whatever centers the, that the engineer specifies, that really should be looking for screw piers at intermediate points in the middle of the slab. So everything is founded on that same firm level down at depth where the screw piers are embedded into. What if instead dead the ground lifts? So we have start with our flat ground down this point, and now the waffle pod system hasn't got a lot of choice but to follow the ground, the heaving ground conditions, particularly if we're talking about screw piers on the outside. Of course, if there's a special system that I'll show you quickly on YouTube in a minute, where these pile caps can be isolated, where the the screw, the waffle pod system or the foundation system can be isolated from the screw here. 
there's a special cap that's been patented and trademarked. Um, special cap that can be used to isolate to allow this to move if the middle of the if part of the footing lifts up our only concern there is if the ground moves up so far that this disengages the post moves sideways because we've got this layer of soil again down around the screw piers that these screw poles may move sideways and not re-engage when the house comes to sit back down again so that's primary concern with these pile caps, the cast-in pile caps that are available, and I'll show them to you on YouTube. If there's screw piers in the middle and the ground's lifting, so it was centre heave, then yet yeah, this isn't going to, the screw piers aren't going to provide any support, especially if there's a pile cap and the waffle slab lifts up off the screw pier, off the shaft. Uh, in which case, now we're relying, once again, on the waffle slab having enough strength to do its spanning. So between this case where the ground's subsiding, this case where the ground's lifting, there is no justification for designing this waffle slab for a lower, we're talking about, remember the H1, H2, E and P classes, there's really no justification for designing a waffle slab if it's even possible for a lower classification than what the soil is simply because you're supporting it on screw piers so I'd caution any designers out there that are saying we're using screw piers we're going to design for a h1 h2 whether it's uplift and and heave or consolidation one way or the other the, the foundation system still needs to stand on its merits if it's consolidation of loose soil then screw piers really come into their own because the ground can settle away from the underside of the foundations. The house, the building will be supported on screw piers which are appropriately designed by the manufacturer. House is support, the building supported, a gap forms up, that's fine, especially if it's consolidation of loose soil, uh, then we're in the position where we can fill that gap around the outside so that nobody's too worried about it. That is my comments on screw piers, their relationship with foundation systems. Um, when they're being used in foundation systems, I really would prefer that whether it's a rough foundation which is dug into the ground or a waffle slab system and it, it's a kind of uh, a merge system where I really recommend that the waffle system end up having a strip footing around the outside around the perimeter that actually goes in below ground level to give us give that building a little bit of lateral stability by all means have a screw pier that takes the the support of the building all the way down into firm soil at depth but by having this combined system a little bit of footing down into the ground i think we can achieve a lot better result the internal footings can still be on polystyrene void formers if you so wish as a designer as a customer that's fine. I uh, really think that having a merge system would be a great idea and solve a few of the other issues we have with waffle pod systems with drainage and water getting in underneath waffle pod systems as well. So there you have it. These are screw piers. We've seen how they're installed. We've seen how they're being used. Uh, we see that the only other thing really that I'd like to comment on is rectification for when a builder manages not to be able to put a post centrally down on the screw pile. Remember we said that with a pile cap and a post load and a screw pier in underneath that these are all fairly vertical loads. The sideways loads we're taking care of with that pile cap. You'll find when the, you have a look at the engineer's drawings that they're relying on the house post that sits down on this pile cap to be pretty much directly in line with the center of the screw pier. The reason that we, the effect that of that not being in line, if the post is somehow being placed offset on the post, on the board pier, with the screw pier directly in the middle, is that that distance, that eccentricity between the distance between the middle of the board pier footing or the centre line of the screw pier 
and where the load is actually being applied is creating a tipping force which we call a moment which this pad footing pile cap is not designed for this steel is not designed for this auger in the ground is not designed for none of the system is designed for this offset footing this offset load on top of a screw on top of a pile cap so if the situation arises where offset footings are identified on site or the builder finds himself in a position where his posts don't align perfectly with the pile caps then the builder has got some more work to do our preferred way to take care of these eccentricity issues is with a series of ground beams so here's our pile cap with the offset post load offset from the center of the pile because the screw here is on that pile center of the pile cap offset load with a series of ground beams that go back and join into the other pile caps in this way uh, in two directions mind you In this way, we can take care of the eccentricity by turning it into a series of beams. In this direction, for example, would be a beam with a load maybe just on the inside between the supports. So a vertical load, a vertical reaction going into the screw piers and the beams doing a little bit of work transferring some load into this screw pier and some load into this screw pier. And for this eccentricity, this because the post is out on the outside, away from the center of the po the center of the screw pile. In this case, we have a load on the outside of this screw, this beam becoming integral with the pile cap. We have a support there, which is a vertical load, vertical reaction into the screw here, and another vertical reaction into the screw here, which is this screw pile and pier cap. So that's how we're gonna take care of posts being offset from the center of a screw pier. We're gonna insist that the build installs a series of ground beams to help tie and transfer loads into adjacent screw piers. So there you have it. We've been through a, a few things. We've talked about screw piers. We've talked about pile caps and their purpose. We've talked about how good screw piers are with three active soils. Talked about the direction of load, where it's sideways, vertical, vertical, up and down, and sideways. And we've talked about how we can do some rectification of these things. I'm Matt Cornell, I'm from Cornell Engineers. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. If you'd like to know more about some other topics, please leave a comment underneath. And if uh, check out our website, We've got a heap of details on there about house rectification, waffle slabs, ground movement, concrete masonry, concrete slabs, the whole works. Uh, come and check out our website. We're looking forward to seeing you and helping you out. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, have a great day. See ya.